Today, I'm going to talk about diagnostic tools for infectious diseases, thereby highlighting the latest tools and their efficiency. I'm Dr. Naresh Rakha, PhD from England, PDD from United Nations, and PDA from Japan. This scientific community nowadays is engaged in developing point of care tests using latest technological advancements. What is point of care testing? Tests which can be conducted at the location of patient are called point of care tests. This process is called point of care testing. Patient refers to sick human beings or an animal. Why we need point of care testing? Because point of care test is performed at or near the location of the patient. It is less time consuming. Its results are used to make decision on therapeutics. It rapidly results, reduces the need for multiple lab visits. It enables timely treatment. It facilitates the containment of the outbreak like COVID-19. And it reduces the reliance on presumptive treatment and thereby facilitates the specific therapy. Point of care test in animal disease diagnostic is all the more of a necessity because it is very difficult to transport sick animals to the well-equipped laboratories and veterinary hospitals. And secondly, restraining animal for collection of clinical sample is a labor-intensive, time-consuming, and a difficult exercise. Therefore, simple and quick diagnostic tests need to be made available wherever the animal is located. World Health Organization has set up the criteria for developing these point of care test called assured criteria. Assured stands for a affordable, sensitive, specific, user-friendly, rapid and robust, equipment-free and deliverable to end users. So all the scientists are supposed to follow this criteria while developing the point of care test. How the point of care tests work? Rapid diagnostic tests work by detecting analytes that are found in or extracted from the clinical samples. There are three types of analytes. Number one, microbial antigens. Number two, patient antibodies that are specific for microbial antigens. And number three, nucleic acids of the pathogens. Point of care tests detect a variety of infectious diseases using related biomarkers including virus particles, nucleic acids, proteins, and antibodies. So we take a couple of examples of infectious diseases where point of care tests have been developed and are being developed. The first category is hemoprotozoan diseases in humans and animals. These slides show the malaria parasite on the left and thalaria parasite, which is equivalent of malaria in cattle. In these cases, microscopy examination of gymsa-stained blood film has been established as the gold standard test for diagnosis of malaria and thalaria, and thus requires qualified and well-trained operators and technicians. The rapid diagnostic test in malaria, number one, lateral flow strips can detect protein dried from malaria parasites in blood, generating a series of clearly visible lines. Microfluidic channels have also been used to successfully mimic the capillary environment for more accurate in-field malaria diagnosis. Regarding the rapid diagnostic tests of thalaria, DNA-based and serological tests are used for detection of thalaria species infection, including PCR, reverse line bloat, LAMP, indirect ELISA, competitive ELISA, etc. To develop a lateral flow test, recombinant thalaria annulator surface protein was produced, antigen was conjugated to colloidal gold particles and used as the detection system for visualization at the test line for binding of antibody present in serum of infected animals. Tests specifically detected antibodies in serum of animals experimentally infected with thalaria annulata and showed no cross-reactivity with serum from animals infected with other bovine pathogens like trypanosome, anaplasma, babesia, etc. Thalaria annulata lateral flow device is easy to perform, delivers results to be read by the naked eye within 10 minutes and is suitable for the detection of infection in the field cases. Second disease is tuberculosis in humans and animals. 
and this picture shows that tuberculosis affects several body organs however lungs are more commonly affected in human beings and this picture on the right is a weak and debilitated cow suffering from bovine tuberculosis tuberculosis is a zoonosis affecting humans and vast variety of animals including cattle buffalo sheep goats dogs horses etc currently standard diagnostic tools for tuberculosis include quantiferon tb liquid culture and smear microscopy many of which require costly instruments well trained individuals and large volumes of samples accurate and rapid point of care diagnostics will be the key to achieve the end tb strategy put up by the world health organization who has endorsed the poc expert mtb rif assay which uses a cartridge based integrated miniature pcr system with minimal technical expertise requirement obtaining test results from unprocessed sputum samples within 90 minutes assay tools such as urine lateral flow lipoarabino men and tb lamp have also been developed awaiting the need to complicated instruments such as thermal cycle controlling systems poct in bovine tuberculosis tuberculosis testing in cattle and other animals can be undertaken by lionx animal tb rapid test it is a novel animal specific tb diagnostic test this test can analyze blood and milk samples both another problem of humans and animals is brucellosis which usually causes abortion in dairy cattle and multiple organ involvement in human beings if it goes chronic brucellosis in humans and animals is a devastating zoonosis affecting human and most of the domestic and wild animals several diagnostic tests have been used in the past and include culture and biotyping of the brucella species molecular identification tests are based on the detection of specific sequences of brucella species for typing of brucella species the multiplex mos pcr is often used and here mos stands for the species of brucella for example abortus militensis ovis and swiss the gold standard in brucellosis remains the isolation of brucella species there are several serological tests for example slow microagglutination test complement fixation test buffered brucella antigen test indirect elisa competitive elisa fluorescence polarization assay milk ring test and skin test etc the point of care tests routinely used for diagnosis of brucellosis in humans and animals are number 1 dipstick assay number 2 lateral flow assay and number 3 rose bengal test coming to the biomarkers of infectious diseases used in point of care test system a biomarker is a characteristic that is objectively measured and evaluated as an indicator of normal biological processes pathogenic processes or pharmacological responses to a therapeutic intervention almost all the molecules or cells involved in the infection process of infectious diseases can be used as biomarkers such as proteins nucleic acids antibodies etc and this diagram shows the biomarkers from and the host cell and immune responsive biomarkers which are being used lately so in the category of biomarkers the first one is the pathogen nucleic acid since almost all infectious diseases are caused by pathogens carrying nucleic acids except for prions pathogen nucleic acid rna or dna can naturally serve as biomarker for the diagnosis of infectious diseases nucleic acid tests for the detection of pathogen specific nucleic acid sequences have been widely used the amount of pathogen genome nucleic acids detected reflects the load of pathogen during the infection multiple approaches have been exploited including number 1 replacing pcr with isothermal amplification methods such as recombinase polymerase amplification popularly known as rpa and loop mediated isothermal amplification popularly known as lamp and secondly by simplifying the experimental processes with integrated microfluidic devices and synthetic biology approach in the category of biomarkers number 2 are the antibodies 
And this picture is high resolution imaging of IgG and IgM molecules by scanning tunneling microscopy. The presence of antipathogen antibodies serve as biomarkers to evaluate the infectious state. During the infectious process, the immune system produces massive amount of antibodies, the level of which may be much higher than the level of pathogens. The level of antibodies may remain high during the entire infection process, while the antigen level may drop significantly at the late stage of infection. In this scenario, the antibodies are more useful for the diagnosis of infectious diseases. It is easier to build immunoassays to detect antibodies than those to detect antigens, which require costly generation and preparation of antibodies. However, when the level of antibody does not correlate well with the infectious stage, antibody tests are not suitable to be used for infectious disease diagnosis. And the third category of biomarkers are circulating microRNAs. As you know, microRNAs play a critical role in host immune response during the infection. These are released into extracellular environments, especially by immune cells as messengers for cell-to-cell -cell communication. Extracellular microRNAs are extremely stable in body fluids, including plasma, serum, urine, saliva, and semen. Circulating microRNAs expression signatures are potential biomarkers to monitor pathological states. In one study, microRNA microarray platform was used to detect 92 differentially expressed microRNAs in serum samples from patients with TB infections. Level of circulating microRNA 93 and 29A were upregulated significantly in serum samples from TB cases compared to the healthy controls. Now, let's discuss a little bit about the technology advancements in point of care testing. The technological advancements have led to the development of compact molecular diagnostic systems, lateral flow assays, microfluidics, plasmonic technologies, and paper based assays. Among them, Microfluidics has been considered as one of the most promising solutions, offering miniaturization and integration of most of the functional modules used in laboratory diagnostic into a portable chip. Plasmonic technologies, including surface plasma resonance, localized surface plasmonic resonance, and surface enhanced Raman scattering, offer ideal properties as readout modules for POCT, such as high sensitivity label-free and real-time monitoring. The integration of plasmonics and microfluidic technologies can potentially serve as an ideal platform for the development of POCT towards inexpensive, robust, and portable solutions. So the ideal microfluidic system with sample to answer for POCT has been demonstrated over here. The microfluidics is a technology used to manipulate very small volumes of fluids offering precise, programmable, spatial, and temporal control of the fluids. Through microfluidics technology, samples and regions can be transported, mixed, and reacted in specific microchambers in a precisely controlled manner. It is naturally an ideal platform for POC test development with many desired features such as automation, integration, and miniaturization. The principle of a microfluidic device for separating malaria-infected RBCs with marginalization concept has been shown over here. Less deformable infected RBCs are concentrated to peripheral walls of the microfluidic channel. During malaria infection, the infected red blood cells progressively lose deformability as the parasites mature in the cell. Based on this fact, a microfluidic device was designed to investigate the potential of using deformability as a biomarker to monitor the infection stages of malaria. Less deformable infected RBCs were more likely to be displaced to the walls of the microfluidic channels. By splitting the main microchannel into side channels, they isolated more than 80% of the infected RBCs into the side channels. Such assays are being designed for POC diagnosis of Hemoprotozoan diseases in animals, for example, thalariosis, babesiosis, and anaplasmosis. And this is integrated microfluidic chip for detection of DNA from M tuberculosis with on chip 
PCR system. And this picture is of microfluidic dongle. It's an automated microfluidic device which has been developed for the detection of single base variations in multi drug resistant forms of M tuberculosis by integrating cell lysis, DNA isolation, PCR amplification, and signal readout into a single small cartridge. Micropillar array were implemented in the micro channels to increase the interaction surface for DNA absorption to enhance the colorimetric signal for readout. The microfluidic device is integrated into a small cartridge which can easily read out by a mobile device. And the microfluidic device for sensitive detection of HIV is also done. A microfluidic chip to count CD4 and CD8 T cells for HIV infection monitoring using differential electrical impedance measurement was developed. When the target CD4 or CD8 lymphocytes flow through a specific area of microfluidic channel, a spike in impedance with specific amplitude and width is recorded. CD4 plus and CD8 plus lymphocyte counting can be completed within 20 minutes with results matching well with the results via flow cytometry. And this lateral flow immunoassays, LFIA, are ideal diagnostic tests with features of less time consumption, less than 15 minutes, easy operation, stability, and low cost. LFIA can be implied for any biological samples like blood, plasma, serum, saliva, urine, etc., and the results can be confirmed with the naked eye. We can also develop in the multiplex LFIA. The multiplex biomarker lateral flow immunoassays are employed for rapid recognition of several target biomolecules in a single platform. Multiplex detection format is capable of rapid analysis of different stages of disease detection of co-infections at once and thus reducing test cost per assay since there is no need to perform the test separately. These assays can differentiate infectious diseases with similar symptoms such as parvovirus, distemper, coronavirus or viral infection in dogs which may cause diarrhea. So it may identify subclinical infection through targeting of several biomarkers and lead the way for highly sensitive point of care testing. Then multiplexing lateral flow immunoassays has been depicted in this diagram and are based on placing a sample stream containing the target analytes along a strip. Strip consists of a membrane and functional pads, for example, sample pad, conjugate pad, and adsorbent pad. The nano-sized particles are immobilized on the conjugated pad to bind and indicate that the target molecules captured the antibody on the surface of a nitrocellulose membrane. Appearance of a line of conjugated reporter particles represents a positive result. To detect multiple pathogens, special conjugated particles are employed to capture multiple analytes on a strip or generate numerous strips within a single cartridge. The schematic of the multiplex lateral flow immunoassay targeting the infectious disease has been shown and explained here. And for the example, dengue, HIV, influenza, malaria, etc. And the latest is the plasmonic technology. The plasmonic technologies are based on interaction between light and conductive electrons of metallic nanomaterials. Various plasmonic nanomaterials like gold, silver, and aluminium have been studied for point of care testing and applications. Engel et al. developed a chlorometric POCT using gold nanoparticle aggregation to detect bacteria. The unique surface plasma resonance properties of these nanomaterials make it a highly promising method for chemical and biological sensing and clinical diagnostics. And these are some of the examples how these are being applied in the field with the help of plasmonic sensors. Based on the sensitivity of surface plasma resonance, and the enhancement of electromagnetic field in proximity to noble metal nanostructures to important classes of plasmonic sensors have evolved. And these two categories are number one, localized surface plasma resonance, and number two, surface enhanced Raman scattering sensors. So with that, I end up my presentation and I'm open to the questions. Thank you very much.